Well, in the wake of our reporting last week, say the White House announced it is pursuing a revocation of security clearances for John Brennan and other former intelligence officials. Not only is the president looking to take away uh, Brennan's security clearance, he's also looking into the clearances of Comey, Clapper, Hayden, Rice, and McCabe. The president is exploring the mechanisms to remove security clearance because they've politicized and in some cases monetized their public service and security clearances. Just minutes later, Jim Clapper, who is a liar, complained that this is all deeply unfair because he has a right to a security clearance. You can't take it away. Here he is on CNN. This is a kind of a petty way of uh, uh, retribution, I suppose, for speaking out against uh, uh, the president, which I think are uh, on the part of all of us, are born out of genuine concerns about, uh, about President Trump. Congressman Raul Labrador is a Republican. He represents the great state of Idaho, and he joins us tonight. Congressman, why do these guys have security clearances in the first place, and why do they feel entitled to have them? That's a great question. So there's two, two issues that we have to address first is why do they have the security uh, clearance at this time? And the reason they have it is in the past we have always extended it to people who worked in, in these kinds of positions because they were benef of benefit to the government. Not because they were a benefit to themselves, but because the government could use their assistance during a transition or anything like that. Clearly, they're not benefiting the government right now. They're not benefiting this administration. But the second question, especially when Clapper, when you talk about Clapper and some of these other individuals, they have been found to lie to Congress. So it's interesting to me, why do they even have this extended security clearance? I agree. When they have already lied uh, to the American people and they have lied to the, the institutions uh, that represent the American people. Well, Clapper flat out lied to the Congress, and I, I don't understand why you all didn't hold him in contempt or prosecute him. What he did seems to me to be illegal. But um, leaving that aside, these guys work for cable news networks. I mean, they're much like I am. They are paid to talk on television. Wouldn't that disqualify them right there? Or do I get a security clearance, too? And what are the rules here exactly? That's a terrific question. So, like I said earlier, they, they have the security clearance to benefit the government. The moment that they start receiving money for the, for the information that they have, the moment that, that they start monetizing the information that they have received from the government, they should no longer have the security clearance. And it's something that in, in this new age where we have cable news, where you have people moving from government to t TV, is something that we need to rethink about extending these security clearances. I don't think they should be done automatically like we have done in the past with these high offices. Yeah, I don't know why we would do it at all. I mean, Brennan is clearly unhinged. She's a political extremist. Isn't the point of the intel agencies to inform the executive so that he can make foreign policy decisions? Is there another reason we have these agencies? I thought that was their charter. That is the only point that they have the security clearance. And that's why in the past we have extended security clearances to people who had high office, uh, these, these security clearances in previous administrations, because they were helping the, the new administration with the information that they needed to receive. They were maybe instructing their replacements. They were working with them. But right now it's clearly that they have, they have decided to be partisan. They have decided to go, become unhinged in many instances to accuse the president of the United States states of, of actual treason is something that, that needs to be really reconsidered, and we need to start uh, thinking about why this individual has this high security clearance. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if the deep state thing is real, but I can promise you the fact these guys have security clearances convincing half the country that it's real is bad just for that, I think. Anyway, Congressman, thank you very much. Thank you. President Trump now mulling a move to scrap the security clearances of top Obama-era officials after a tweet from Senator Rand Paul accusing former CIA Director John Brennan of politicizing and monetizing his position. I think there's a great danger to having talking heads on TV who are ex-CIA agents and still have classified clearance. There's a real danger that they might inadvertently uh, reveal classified information. And, you know, John Brennan's got a history of this. 
Joining me now with reaction to this is former CIA operative Mike Baker. Mike, thanks for coming on. You listen to sure. Rand Paul there. He makes a, a pretty good point that sounds logical. Um, but when you look at this list of the six people that the president uh, wants to maybe take away that clearance from, uh, you see a lot of his worst enemies on there. And that makes people think that this is political. Well, it, yeah, it certainly appears that way. It looks at... You know, and look, this we're in uncharted territory here, um, on on both sides. Uh, we've never really seen this sort of public um, animosity and and criticism from former um, heads of the intel community. John Brennan, as an example, former director from the agency, a tremendous experience, right? Yeah. But uh, the fact that he's been out there and so vocal is uh, very uh, unusual, extremely unusual. And obviously you've got uh, Director uh, Comey, uh, McCabe, both of whom, uh, you know, I believe, we can confirm this, but I believe don't have their security clearances anymore. So this appears to be something that was fired off without a lot of uh, thought to it. So it does appear to be uh, vindictive on his part. Look, security clearances, um, you've got, what, some four million people out there yeah. with security clearances. Uh, a little a few over a million that have top secret clearances and there's a cottage industry in Washington DC of people who leave sure. the government retain their clearances and then use that as a hiring element a, a, an attractive point for commercial companies to hire them bring them in they don't, don't have to then uh, front the cost and the time of sponsoring somebody for their clearances right. but at that level this this is a different game this is a much different situation so we really are again in ch uncharted territory well, that's, that's where the criticism comes from why not just to make this about all one million of those people with the top secret clearance why just these six um, mm -hmm. I will say that I think a lot of people found when when James Comey who wrote the book uh, after he got out, that that seemed a little bit like that's that's almost directly profiting from what you went through and what and what you had gone through. But he's a moot point. He doesn't have it anyways. Right. The question becomes: These people are, are they being paid by these networks to talk? Are they being paid for their experience, or are they being paid for their current access? And I think that's where it gets a little murky, right? Whether or not they're being paid for what they know or what they could learn right now. Yeah, I mean, my experience is is, is frankly that they're getting paid for their reputation, right, for their, yeah. for their title. And so if you have someone coming out who was a former director, uh, that's the attractiveness. Uh, look, the, you know, the, the, the argument sometimes is that we want them to retain their clearances at that level, that senior level, because then they can, they can act as sort of um, pseudo-mentors or, or advisors to the incoming uh, security or intel leaders sure. and you know in reality that they, doesn't really happen and that tends to be a one-way conversation anyway they're not sharing uh, the, the, the that current administration not sharing details with former leaders uh, so it really is a, a matter of, of reputation these people get hired for and also you know you talk about a, a, a network they go yeah. on to the network uh, it's, it's, these people are very experienced. The, you know, they're not passing classified information, or I don't think that's a danger. I really do think this was something, it's, it's interesting that, that Rand Paul, you know, wanted to bring this up. Um, I think it's much like other situations coming out of the administration. Um, it's, it's unusual messaging, and the yeah. messaging is what drives, you know, sort of this, this anger from the other side. Look, they could have just simply said internally, all right, you know, yes, we're, we're displeased with the way these people are talking. People have the right to talk. Um, maybe when it comes time for these clearances to expire, we just won't renew them. That has right. happened all the time. Yeah. So, again, I think it's a messaging issue from the administration. I think it all spurred from that comment from Brennan, uh, you know, talking about how Trump was traitorous after that meeting in Helsinki. I think the, that's what really brought it on. It sounds like that's what Rand Paul yeah, sure. was trying to get at. Thank you, Mike Baker, for coming mm -hmm. on this morning. We appreciate your time.